Recall that torque is the cross product of R and F. So we say R cross F. And the magnitude of that cross product is R times F perpendicular, which we know is calculated F sine phi. So RF sine phi is the magnitude of my torque. And the direction, here we see torque is a vector. The direction uses the right-hand rule. You take the F vector, you draw it tail to tail with the R vector, and you take the fingers of your right hand and you sweep your fingers from R to F. And if you do that, you'll notice your thumb of your right hand points upward. So in this example, R cross F, the torque vector's direction is in the positive Z direction. So we have magnitude and direction for our torque vector. We're gonna show you here how to uh, use a little shortcut uh, to figure out what is the torque or what is the cross product of any two vectors uh, that are given to you in unit vector notation. So here we have our R vector in X, Y, and Z components, our F vector in X, Y, and Z components. And we're going to use the distributive property to take the cross product of the X components, then the X and the Y, then the X and the Z, and the X, the Y and the Z, Y, the Y and the Z, the Z and the X, the Z and the Y, and the Z and the Z. Okay, so here we go. Uh, when we take the cross product of RX and FX, its magnitude is RX FX sine of the angle between them, which is sine of zero. So that term goes away. Now cross product of Rx and Fy, the magnitude is Rx Fy sine 90, 90 being the angle between the x and the y uh, axes. And that's the magnitude. And the direction, if we take, use the right hand rule, sweep our fingers of our right hand from x to y, then our thumb of our right hand will point in the positive z. So that's what we see, positive Z, K for the Z direction. Then we cross uh, RX with FZ. Again, the magnitude is RX FZ sine 90. And the direction now, if I sweep my fingers from X to Z of my right hand, you'll see that your right thumb points downward. So it's in the negative Y direction. And you can follow through uh, distributing all those cross products, this is what you get. And when you combine the I terms, combine the J terms and the K terms, this is what you will get for the I, the J and the K. And in order to set up a little method of solving matrices, we're gonna change this J representation. We're gonna uh, change the sign on the terms and put a negative sign out here. And you'll see why we do that in a second here. So here's how we're going to set it up. We're going to create what's called a matrix. So it's a th uh, three rows and three columns for this example. And the first row is I, J, K. The second row is the first vector of the cross product. And this th last row is the second vector of the cross product. Notice we're going to put a negative sign on the J here, and that has to do with this little uh, manipulation we did here. We'll show you why we do that here. Okay, so the reason why we set it up like this is first to find the I term of the cross product, we're going to cover up the I column, and we're going to cover up the top row except for I. And now we're just gonna do a little X, of, like the shape of an X, this way. So I say RY times FZ minus RZ times FY, and that's what you see here. So that will be my X component of the torque vector. Then for the Y, I'm gonna cover up the row and the column of the J, and now I do my X again, RX times FZ minus RZ times FX. And that's what you see there. But this negative sign, this is there so we agree with what we had 
before over here, right? This is why we did this. So we can stick with our X cross method. So there we go, RxFz minus RzFx, but then this negative sign goes there. And then the Z component of our torque answer, cover up the Z row and the Z column, and now it's RxFy minus RyFx. There you go. So let's show you this with some numbers. Here we go. If our R vector is 2, negative 3, 4, and our force vector is 5, 2, 1, then here we go. Here's our R vector, 2, negative 3, 4. Here's our F vector, 5, 2, 1. And using our method that we just showed you up here, plug in the numbers, and we come up with our answers for the magnitude of the X component of the torque is negative 11, 18 for the Y component, and 19 for the Z component. So that would give me my answer in unit vector notation for my torque like this. And if I need to know the magnitude of the torque, then I use my three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, and I see that my magnitude of my torque is 28.39 Newton meters. Once we know the magnitude, then we can go back to our usual equation for torque, R times F times the sine of the angle between R and F. And uh, now I know the magnitude of the torque. The magnitude of R uses the three-dimensional Pythagorean uh, of the X, Y, Z components. Same thing for the F vector. And now I can solve this for theta, and that will allow me to know the angle between R and F up here. That is the angle between these two vectors.